So I personally love winging things. I think it's really fun, but there's a time and a place for it. And when you're working in a law firm under lots of pressure and you have a client waiting, that is not the time to wing anything. Uh, so here's the therapy part of research the law. It's, it's gonna be very normal for you to have thoughts and feelings along these lines here, especially like, am I committing malpractice? Is this the right law? The, the whole point of research law is to teach you a method to overcome those things. So our, our Google world has taught us that we can just throw in some search terms and, and find things. And that works if like you're on Amazon looking for an orary or you know some other Christmas present. But um, if we throw in our search terms for our hearing loss issue, we're largely going to get law firms because Google's biased toward those who pay them money to put their, you know, their links up top in the, uh, the research hits. So Google's not going to really help us that much for, for researching the law. Uh, and then if we throw them into Lexis here, we're going to get lots of, of different stuff as well. Uh, you, you can see here just tons of stuff, but it, it's like we're an archaeologist at this point, and there's all these little shards of the law everywhere, and we have to piece them together, just like an archaeologist, you know, finds a little shard of pottery here, a little shard of pottery there, and then they spend hours and hours and hours, if not weeks, piecing these pieces together. Well, that's ridiculous. We don't need to do that. Instead, we're going to work smarter, not harder, and we're going to rely on what other people have already researched and found for us. So to do that, we're going to follow a methodical plan. In step one, we plan our research by first framing the issue and then uh, brainstorm some search terms. And then we take those search terms into secondary authority and we use treatises and encyclopedias and look for people that have already researched our issue, and then we just use their research results. And then secondary authority undoubtedly will lead us to codified law. And uh, for us, the codified law here would be chapter 627, section 737. And that lays out when somebody in an auto accident may sue for pain and suffering in Florida. Uh, but then we'll also do an, an exhaustive search to make sure we're not missing anything. And then finally, we'll look for case law. And secondary authority, step two, undoubtedly led us to some case law. But we're going to do a, a full, thorough search of case law to make sure we're not missing anything. And uh, no matter what source I looked in, this Wald case kept coming up. It's from the Florida Supreme Court. And it does a nice job of, of laying out the, um, the issue for us and give us, giving us an idea that hearing loss likely will qualify for one of the two different ways that it would apply to us. And uh, no, I didn't find any cases specifically on hearing loss that address our narrow issue. But if pain in a thigh can uh, lead to recovery, then certainly loss of hearing, one of God's given five senses, uh, then uh, we can probably uh, recover. Okay, so anyway, the point is follow a methodical research process and the whole point of research to law is to show you how to do that. Okay, see you back in the book.